Hello and welcome to a quick Cinema 4D tip on how to make your life easier when it comes to modeling. So if you've ever used any other 3D applications such as Maya, 3ds Max, or Blender, you've probably used their loop and ring selection tools. Cinema 4D does have these, they're just kind of hidden away and not exactly the easiest to remember, at least for me. So if you go over to the object and then the edge selection and select our cube here, we can actually access these tools a couple of ways. Go up to the select menu and you can see right here there's loop and ring selection or you can use the hotkeys for them, U and L for the, the loop and then U and V for the ring selection. I don't personally like those hotkeys, you can change them but I just kind of like leaving most of the stuff default in Cinema 4D but I want them to be accessible for a way through a way that I will actually remember, which if you see my icon up here is changing, I have them docked into this menu right here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, as well as add some icons such as these into your menus up here. These are actually, these are Redshift and then this is X Particles. You'll have to actually have those, pro, or those plugins to have these icons, but any other icons that you wanna add, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So if I go over here to the layout and then bring us back to the standard layout, sorry, the startup layout that you have when you first start up Cinema 4D, this is what you're gonna have. So how do I get these icons into this menu? You see they're not there now. So you wanna either right click in like this area or this area down here, or you can go up to window and then customization and then customize palettes. Either way, you're gonna get this window that pops up. You'll make sure that this little checkbox right here is checked. See when I check it, this blue outline outlines kind of everything around here. That lets you know that you can actually change the palettes here. So first thing we want to do is click on this new palette. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then if you're OCD like me, you want to have these be the exact same as the way, as the way they are right here. So we're going to show you how to do that. So let's start off with the live selection, Oops, live. And then you want the one that has the matching symbol. It also has the nine right there. Not all of these will have that hot key, but all of them will have matching symbols. So just look for the, the symbol that matches. And then you can just click and drag it and bring them in here. The lasso selection. And then our last one, polygon. Oops, polygon selection bring that in there as well and then we can start bringing in our own so we'll do loop want well, loop first and then you can bring in the ring selection so if you actually want to oh, I didn't do it if you actually want to bring in any icons and dock them over here for easier access or over here for example you can actually do that just by clicking and dragging bring it over here if you want to get rid of it you don't like where it's at just double click on it and it'll get rid of it if you want to separate them you can see there is this icon separator group and then fill space. The icon separator will give you this tiny little gap that's in between these two icons. The group will give you this bigger uh, space there and then the fill space will give you a giant gap. So use those to your pleasing to get whatever kind of look you want. But I'm gonna show you real quick how to get this to go not only vertical but also have these this text along here as well. So first thing you want to do is right click and then go to change orientation. Then you want to right click again, go to show and then text. That'll give you your text. And then you want to go and click fold palette. Now you notice it still has the text here. So we'll go back to show and then get rid of that. So now inside the folder, it has the text and outside the folder it doesn't. And then we can just bring that, drag and drop that right there. And then we can double click and get rid of the one that we started with. Actually, we'll just close out of all this and you'll see that now we have all of our selection tools in one place in one little folder thing that we can access super easy and use to our advantage. So if you want this to actually be saved when you close out of Cinema 4D, you actually have to actually save it. And I will show you how to do that real quick. So we'll go up to window. And then we're gonna go to customization and we're gonna go and save as startup layout. So if you click that, you're gonna have it save and it'll bring you to a new 
startup thing, if you click startup right there, startup user, it'll give you the one that signifies user, which is user edited. So now you see that I have this icon and I have all of these icons in here that I have added to my liking. So you'll use this to change your, your interface and set it up exactly how you want it, such as you would do in anything else, such as like ZBrush um, or Maya, you know, 3ds Max. Just set your workspace to however it's gonna help you to work the fastest. So hopefully this helps. You can also change the menus, add a menu through this. If you go to customization and then customize menus, you can actually add menus in here, but I'm not really gonna go through that. So a whole another rabbit hole to go through with that. But that's how you would access that as well. But hopefully this helps you out. If, uh, if not, I'm sorry, but I thought this was extremely useful. It took me a while to figure out how to actually get things to dock in and have the text alongside it like that. So hopefully it helped you out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I have other videos if you wanna check those out. I'll probably have some more coming as well. But subscribe if you don't wanna miss those. You wanna have some more tips coming your way. But other than that, Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.